Reading for February 22nd, Science of Mind, A Philosophy of Faith, A Way of Life by Ernest Holmes. Reading from page 124, paragraph 3, through page 127, paragraph 3, using inclusive language. Subjective Law We should grasp the idea of universal subjectivity, the potentiality of all things, the divine creative medium. This is the principle through which we are to demonstrate the healing of the body or of conditions, and it acts accurately and mathematically because it is the law of cause and effect. When we think, we think from conscious intelligence or spirit. The thought then becomes subjectified. It goes into the subconscious mind. What is the individualized person's subconscious mind? It is our atmosphere or mental center in universal subjectivity. It is held in our philosophy that there is no such thing as your subjective mind and my subjective mind, meaning two, for this would be duality. But there is such a thing as the subjective state of my thought and of your thought in mind. This should be seen clearly for here is where the psychology and metaphysics separate, where their interpretations differ. When we think, we think into a universal creative medium, a receptive and plastic medium which surrounds us on all sides, which permeates and flows through us. When we think, we must and do think into and upon it since it is omnipresent. As each subjectifies a consciousness about themselves, they are surrounding themselves with a mental atmosphere, and nothing can enter this except through the avenues of their own thought. But this thought might be conscious or unconscious. In most cases, it is unconscious. However, the student of metaphysics is learning to consciously control the stream of thought that they allow to enter in to, that they allow to enter their inner and creative mentality. The result of our own thinking. Thought is an inner movement, which is largely the result of our perception of life and our reaction to it. Every time this movement takes place, it takes place within mind, upon cause, according to law. We are dealing with the same power that molds the planets and all that happen upon them. And the limit to our ability to use this power is not in principle, but in our understanding of it. We are dealing with a neutral creative power, just as we would be in the case of electricity or any other natural force. It is on a higher plane, for it is the power of intelligence. Our thought in its externalization will reach its own level, just as water reaches its own level by its own weight and without effect. This is in line with necessity for the universe, in order to be at all, must be self-existent. By the self-existence of the universe is meant a universe which is its own reason for being, a universe which exists by virtue of itself being all. Each one of us today is the result of the use we have made of the law, either consciously or unconsciously. As soon as we realize this, we shall see that what we are now, or what we now have and experience, is the result of what we have thought, and the answer to what we shall be is contained in what we are now thinking or we can change our thinking. People think and suppose that they let go of those thoughts, that they are finished with them, but such is not the case. For thought becomes subjectified, subjectified in mind like a seed planted in the soil, and unless neutralized, it stays there and determines the attraction and repulsion in the experience of the one thinking. There is a constant action on the subjective side of life.
and it is the unconscious process which decides what is going to happen in the outer experience. Whatever we think, act, believe in, feel, visualize, vision, image, read, and talk about, in fact, all process processes which affect or impress us at all are going into the subjective state of our thought, which is our individualized use of universal mind. Whatever goes into the subjective state of our thought tends to return again as some condition. So we and we alone control our destiny. Law is mind in action. There is one infinite life acting through law, and this law is mental. Law is mind in action. We are surrounded by an infinite, subconscious, impersonal, neutral, plastic, and ever-present thinking stuff from which all things come and from which its original state permeates and penetrates all things. By impressing our thought upon this substance, we can cause it to produce for us that which we think. Impressing our thoughts upon it is not an external act, for we are in, for when we impress our thoughts upon ourselves, we are thinking into it. This is because of the unity of all mind. Jesus said, As thou hast believed, so be it done unto thee. Knowing the nature of law, he did not say, It is done unto you as you wish. He announced the universality of the law when he called it a law of belief. The Destructive Use of the Law Someone may say, I can't imagine God not caring. I, can't e I cannot either, but we are dealing with the law. Does the law of electricity care whether it cooks the dinner or burns the house? Whether it electrocutes a criminal or warms a saint? Of course, it does not. Does the urge which impels people to express care whether a person kneels in ecstasy or lies drunk in the gutter? We are dealing with law and it follows that since we are dealing with law, it will ultimately bring back to us the result of the forces which we set in motion through it. Consequently, no person who is enlightened would seek to use this law destructively, for they would know that, sooner or later, the very powers set in motion by themselves would ultimately destroy them. All, that, all they that take the sword shall perish by the sword. The Spirit of Christ is the Spirit which constructively uses the law. The Spirit of Antichrist is the destructive use of the law. The Spirit of Christ, being in line with the cosmic life, will always transcend, neutralize, destroy, and utterly obliterate the Spirit of the Antichrist. Finally, only the Spirit of Christ can succeed.